Hi, this is a brief introduction to using oscilloscope. So the model that we can see here is Tektronics model TDS3012, which is 100 MHz, 1.25 uh, giga sample per second, which gives me the ability uh, to understand what frequency this oscilloscope can see. This means that this oscilloscope can see 100 MHz signal uh, at uh, minus 3 dB. What is minus 3 dB? Minus 3 dB in this case, if we will look at 1 volt signal peak to peak, we will see uh, at 100 MHz that the signal actual voltage seen on the oscilloscope will be uh, 700, about 700 millivolt, which is the minus 3 dB loss. <coughs> okay, so most of the oscilloscope have similar function. Uh, not all have all the function, but some of the function are must in all the oscilloscope in order to see the signals. So uh, let's connect this probe which is uh, also Tektronics. This is a 200 megahertz probe connecting it to channel one. This is oscilloscope, by the way, has two channels, which are channel one and channel two, also external trigger. <clears throat> so first I want to connect uh, the probe into uh, the probe compensation, which is here. So I will connect the signal and also the ground. Okay. This gives me the ability to see a 5 volt peak to peak at 1 kilohertz. This is the default of most of the compensation probe connections. So uh, we can see that the signal is 5 volt tolerant. By the way, the mark 1 is the GND, meaning that the GND start here. And uh, each cell or each square is 2 volt now. So we can see that we have from this point about 2.5 squares which are equal to 5 volt. We can also see a... we can also... okay, let's move on and we will talk about the other thing. Now, I'm working now in a DC mode, which means that the signal start at 0 volt. If I will move channel 1 to AC coupling, so this uh, connecting the input of the channel through a capacitor. So the signal will be floating between uh, two and a half positive and minus two and a half volt. So let's do it. So I'm moving into AC. So we, we are seeing now the same signal, which is five volt and one kilohertz, but the signal is not steady. It is not steady since the trigger, which is the arrow on the right side, is a little above the signal. If you will move it lower than 2.5 uh, volts, so the signal will become steady. We can see that the trigger is the mark here on the bottom right, which says that the trigger now is at point, uh, 2.96 uh, volt. If I will move the trigger with the trigger level button below uh, this threshold, so the signal will become steady. So let's do it. And now it is steady. Uh, another thing that uh, I want to explain is the vertical, uh, vertical scale and position. The vertical scale and position is moving around uh, the y-axis, so I can move the signal around the y-axis, 
and I can also change the scale. The scale now, as I said, is 2 volt per square or per cell. Uh, so let's do it. If I will move it, so now the scale is 5 volt, so the signal becomes smaller. If I move to the other side, of course, uh, at about, not about, exactly 1 volt per square, so now we can see that from the top to the bottom we have five squares. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Let's go a little about measuring. Measuring, we have a measure button which gives me uh, all the menu of the available measure that this oscilloscope has. So we have a period frequency positive, pulse negative. I will go a little over it. So period is the time uh, the time of a, a wave uh, for one cycle. So now I know that it is one kilohertz so if I will uh, press the period I will see that the time is uh, one divided by the frequency so it will be one millisecond okay so let's uh, do it and we can see that it is 90-95 microsecond which is very close to one millisecond frequency we'll see the frequency that is currently one kilohertz <coughs> so we can see that it is very close positive pulse so if all uh, the signal is one millisecond so the positive is about half so it will be about uh, 500 microsecond <clears throat> the negative is the same okay so let's go go to uh, menu number two we can see that this uh, menu is one out of six so i will move to menu two <clears throat> here we have the rise time okay the rise time of the signal I don't know what it is exactly depends on what the oscilloscope can give me out so let's see what it is okay I can't uh, I can't do it because I've selected for measurement uh, which is the maximum that we can so uh, now they are all deleted and we'll go to rise time so the rise time is something around nanosecond the fall time I guess will be similar more or less positive duty cycle in our case it's the same uh, as we seen uh, the upper or positive uh, duty cycle so it will be around a uh, half millisecond ah okay this is in percent so the positive from all the signal is 50 percent because half of the time it is a uh, five volt and half of the time it is zero volt the negative will be the same 50 percent all the menu off uh, let's go again to measure menu move to number three delete all measurement and let's see okay i will not talk about a positive overshoot but uh, the oscilloscope <coughs> give exactly what it will measure we can see the lines that it will look for a steady signal on the top and we'll measure what spike we have above also for the negative the peak to peak uh, will be in this case 5 volt and the amplitude uh, will be the same We'll move to uh, menu 4. In menu 4 we have a high and low 
uh, channel 1 high is in AC now it is 2.5 the low will be minus 2.5 the maximum will be 5 volt the minimum will be uh, minus 2.5 <coughs> let's see it again deleting all measurement again so uh, the maximum is 2.7 the minimum is minus by the way if you will measure it in DC so the minimum will be zero moving next this is a uh, the mean uh, mean voltage the mean is a uh, is like looking at the average <clears throat> so the average is around 0 volt cycle minimum let's leave it RMS is uh, root mean square which is equal uh, to looking at every point by the square of this point calculating the square calculating all the squares and doing a root square to it okay so uh, in this case it will be 2.5 volt <clears throat> okay these are the basic function so I will again bring uh, I will delete <coughs> all the measurement and I will look only at the frequency and the voltage peak to peak and the RMS voltage <coughs> okay now we can see that this uh, value okay I will move to DC now channel 1 menu off channel 1 DC I will move the signal around uh, that we will be able to see it on the screen I will get back to the compensation of the probe the compensation of the probe give us the ability to see the signal in the best way now I will explain the best way we can see that the line on the top and on the bottom are not fully straight are a little circled so I can compensate this by a, a filter that is in the probe so let's see it I have here a, like a screw that I can move to the right and the left side and this will change the top a, uh, the to be straight at the top and in the bottom of the signal so let's move it in order to see it we can see that it is changing now the best of course that it will be straight we are doing this in order to be able to see fast signal in the probe in the best and real uh, measures that we can uh, see because if this will not be straight so we will see some effects that uh, are not real because of less of compensation of the probe this is again changing an uh, RC filtering on the probe to fit the signal and uh, to fit the probe another important thing that when we are doing it we need to see that the 5 volt is 5 volt which means that if I will change the probe setup we can see that the probe is multiplied by 10 and this probe should be like this because if it is not like this so the reading of the voltage will be incorrect so let's see it if I will go 
to the probe multiply setup and I will change it a little let's say multiply by 5 so now I can see that the peak to peak has changed to 2.7 volt but I know that it should be 5 volt why this happens because the probe should be uh, uh, connected at 10 times and if it is not so what we see is not the correct voltage so I will move it back this is of course depends on the probe that you are connecting to the scope some of the new scope have a automatic calibration let's say or probe setup by the pins okay <clears throat> so the uh, important things to understand is about the vertical scale we should be able to see the maximum or the best pictures that we want to see we can change it and move it around uh, around this point also we have the horizontal scale the horizontal scale will change uh, what is the square on the x-axis what is the time per square okay so let's see it so we can see that now it is calibrated to 400 microsecond per square on the x-axis and if I will change it to lower value so I will see the signal more open uh, another thing that I can see if I want to look at specific place we have here the triggering which is uh, the T on the top and if I will move the position so the T will move and all the signal will be moved to the right or to the left <coughs> this is some very basic understanding most of the digital oscilloscope, almost all of them uh, have a very important button which is auto set which give us the best picture that it can uh, when we are not seeing a good picture let's do an example for this so I will move the signal to be seen not very good and now I will press the auto set which should set up everything to see the best picture so I will press it and we can see that it uh, brought the signal around the zero uh, and to see a very good picture of the signal of course if it is not good enough for me so now I can use again the vertical and the horizontal scaling and positioning so I will move it stretch the signal and I can see more cycles or less cycles depends on what I need another important thing is the triggering menu the triggering is what the scope will look at the start point of the signal which means if I will go to the trigger menu we can see that now the triggering is on channel 1 we can see that the slope is positive meaning from this point and this point which is the cross between this arrow of the trigger and the T from this point here it will look for a positive a positive uh, change of the signal if I will move the slope to negative so in this point instead of seeing the upper we will see the falling of the signal let's do it so concentrate on here I will move it to a slope negative slope and it has changed another feature is we select the voltage where the signal uh, will be triggered which means that as we seen before if I'm not on the correct place 
so the scope will not be able to give us a freezing picture. Let's see, I remove the arrow below the voltage of the signal and we will see that it will disappear. Okay, or it is moving, anyway it is not steady. This doesn't mean that the signal is not steady, this means that the scope doesn't see it good enough. Okay, uh, this is for now, maybe I will do some more lessons in the future about understanding into more deep details about the abilities of this scope. For example, we can save reference files, we can do some mathematical operation, we can do some uh, smart triggering to look for a specific, uh, specific case of the signal and many other features as long as the oscilloscope have, have them in its software and is uh, good enough uh, to show. But <clears throat> what we've seen today will be on most of the digital oscilloscope on the world, in the world, and on the same names, which mean vertical positioning and scale, horizontal positioning and scale, measurement, channel, AC, DC coupling, uh, trigger mode, positive, negative pulse of triggering, searching for frequency, RMS, peak to peak, and all what I showed. Thank you for now and bye.